Welcome to LithiZim. Today's video is hosted by Sage Wagner, a highly skilled geologist and geophysicist who will guide you through the exciting world of geoscience. Okay, what's up guys? Uh, today, we're gonna be doing some uh, electrical resistivity data processing using uh, AGI's Earth Imager 2D. I have a sample data set here. Um, you can see that, um, okay, so first I'm gonna show you the AGI Superstand Administrator. Um, this is how we extract the ER data from the Superstand. We have the R8 model. Um, so typically you're plugged into the super sting. Um, currently I'm not plugged in. I've already extracted the data, but, uh, just as reference, this is the, uh, program that we use. We click connect. Um, basically the data files populate here and you right click, read file, and then you're able to save the dot stg file. And so I'm going to close out of that. Um, so these are the files that um, I extracted from the SuperStain. Uh, so we're going to be opening the STG file. So the first thing we want to do is to open uh, Earth Imager. Um, and then Essentially, uh, Earth Imager 2D, we're going to open that up. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a um, .trn file. Those are going to be the terrain files. Um, and I've actually already created those um, as well. So this is going to be um, the ER1 through ER4.txts. Um, and these are going to be associated to 1, 2, 3, 4 um, SDG files. Uh, note that the software does say TRN file, however, um, you can just uh, save it as the .txt and the software will uh, it'll be able to handle that, that file type. So I'm here in AGI Earth Imager. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, Read Data, go into uh, on another uh, let's see, on other screen, going to um, show you here. If we want to open up um, to .stg, I'm going to open up our first file. Okay, so we can see here we have the measured apparent resistivity pseudo section. So our next step is going to be to read the terrain file. So I'm going to go file, read terrain file. Note that it uh, is looking for the TRN. Um, however, we're just going to do all files, scroll down, um, open ER1. Okay, so we have now read the files. Um, the terrain file that is, and um, the next step um, is to invert uh, the data. But uh, first, I just would like to show you an example of a uh, TRN file. Um, so let me open up one of those, and so it needs to be in this exact format where. Uh, the header is TRN file unit. Uh, we're in the US, so we're going to be using feet. And this one um, is a reference to um, corrected truex, whereas if you were to use, you know, input two, then that would be um, for actually tape, uh, tape X. So that's what you're going to be measuring in the field. Note that uh, my uh, X values have been corrected based on the uh, evolution. So that's uh, the format that is expected. Going to close out this, don't save. Okay, so now we're going to go to 
start inversion. I'm going to push this uh, green green arrow. And right now it is um, beginning the inversion process. Um, you can see here the iterations are going to increase. And ultimately, the um, RMS um, is going to decrease uh, with multiple iterations. Uh, we note a RMS error of about 3.48%. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, generally, we like to uh, see those values uh, beneath 5%. Um, so the next step is, uh, this is actually pretty good data, but just to show you, um, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to actually be taking away uh, some of the anomalous data. And um, that can be due to many reasons, um, whether it's geology or um, instrument um, kind of issues. Ultimately, uh, we want to remove that data. So we go to view, convergence data misfit. We're going to go to the data misfit histogram. And as I said, um, you can see that most of the data falls um, within a 0% uh, uh, misfit. In other cases, um, if we have data you know, outside of the, um, kind of, uh, essentially it's misfit, we're going to uh, use the the tab, um, you know, the arrows on the keyboard to um, remove that data. And you can see here, I removed. Um, we're going to remove 1.4%. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and do that. Um, not necessary for uh, the sample data set, but um, another data set, uh, we can get uh, much more um, noisy data. So let's go ahead and remove that. So then we are now going to um, invert it one more time. So we're going to click this run inversion. Let's see if uh, we can reduce the RMS error. And let's see if uh, you know the model changes um, at all. Um, so far, it seems to be uh, 2.63 looks like it stopped. Um, so these are um, pretty reasonable data. We can see here we have a um, you know fairly kind of low resistivity layer at the surface. Um, here we're having a, a pretty good um, high resistivity anomaly, and that's uh, about 218 um, ohm per meter. Uh, one thing to note is that um, when we're inverting uh, several resistivity lines, we should ensure that um, we're starting at the same place. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to um, settings. Um, let's do, we're going to go to resistivity inversion settings. And you can see here, um, I started with a, a custom number of 70, and uh, that's uh, consistent with uh, what this, this data set um, suggested. So we're going to uh, start at this for all of our um, all of our lines. So now um, we have this. We're pretty much um, done with the um, processing. Um, also, we can add, um, click this button here to, um, to add a, uh, basically a, a blanking file um, as the, the right now it's 0.5, um, we tend to use uh, 0.75 um, or even um, 1. And so this looks this looks fine. Um, I'm happy with um, these data, and so we're going to go file save data. Um, okay, that's right. This always happens. So Earth Imager does not know which of the three images to save to save the data in XYZ format. Choose the desired image. So 
Uh, okay, so we're gonna go up to view. And then the one that we want is gonna be the um, inverted resistivity section. Now we removed those other uh, data. So here we go. Um, we're going to Okay, so now it's just going to be rinse and repeat. We're going to, once again, we're going to read data. Read uh, the second one. File, return file. Change to all files. ER2. Okay, it's uh, taken those data. And invert. Okay, so it's uh, higher RMS as um, so it's 21%. Um, that is not uh, sufficient, so we must remove some more data. View convergence and data misfits, data misfit histogram. You can see here we got uh, a lot of red. Um, and right now, let's let's tab over. Um, let's try. We don't want to. Uh, uh, some of this data might be real, so we don't want to remove more than um, you know maybe five to ten percent at a time. So let's go ahead and remove most of the data. I'll try again. Going to run this inversion again. Okay, so that looks um, a lot more um, as expected. And we're getting a RMS of 3.67. Um, that's, that's good. Um, I don't want to remove any more data, so um, I'm going to go and view, inverted restate section, file data. Okay. Save that as a .dat, and then we're going to manipulate everything in Surfer. Okay, just to confirm, um, let's go to settings, and I'll show you that once again, we started at the 70 um, ohm meter. That's uh, that each model uh, has a starting um, input parameters that are the same. We don't want the uh, software to pick different ones. While they're probably going to be similar, you know, we want to ensure that um, consistency. So I'm going to go through the next one. And um, open the uh, terrain file. ER3. Okay, inversion. And usually I like to look at this image here and um, ensure that there aren't um, too many um, kind of like bow tie. Um, okay, so maybe um, Basically, you can use this image to determine um, the quality of your data. Um, if you see any kind of uh, weird looking artifacts, then it might be that you have some bad data. View, convergence, data misfit. And you can see that this data is uh, kind of much um, wider um, distribution. So let's, let's just go with uh, um, or if um, 5 to 10 percent of the time, we have a pretty high or mess error. We're going to move that noisy data. Try again. Okay, starting lower. Get down to 18. Let's see what, uh, what we can come up with. OK, 
Okay, that's uh, quite interesting. Pretty high, uh, uh, very high um, resistive uh, kind of body here. Uh, this is a um, area with uh, lots of gravel and sand, so it should be that we're seeing uh, those variations. So then let's go ahead and um, let's take out a little bit more data until we get under our 5% um, rule. Um, this is suggesting a 5% removal. I like this. Um, using the tabs on my keyboard, um, the arrow keys that is, move more to data. Convert one more time. That seems uh, much much better, much lower. Um, this number seems um, really high. Um, have to uh, consider whether or not that's that's real. Um, let's uh, I'm gonna do some research over here. Um, kind of figure out. Um, if that seems like a reasonable number. Um, so 100,000 ohm meter. Um, I'm assuming that sure it's uh, actually like a geologic feature. Look at a chart on my other screen and um, so but regardless, we can uh, edit that in Surfer if uh, we want to lower the total range. But um, maybe um, does seem kind of uh, kind of high, but um, it's certainly possible that uh, this could be uh, some kind of uh, maybe uh, bedrock um, uh, anomaly. Okay, so now let's file save. Oops, once again, it will only let us do one at a time. Okay, save that one, and we're going to do our final file. STG file, we need to tear in all files. And um, let's go. Okay. Uh, 9.68 percent that's not bad but let's go ahead and remove some of the data and uh, let's see here 11 percent is a little high but um, let's see let's let's just do it one, one step at a time try again And that did it. So no need to delete more data than um, necessary. So good, uh, highly resistive um, package here. Could be probably uh, some gravel, um, some good clean sand. View. Very resistive section. Wow. 
save data. And that's it. So pretty straightforward. Um, not a lot of interpretation um, involved in processing, mainly just uh, deciding what is considered um, good data to to add in your model to invert. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, hope you find this helpful. Please comment, uh, like, subscribe, um, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Cheers. Thank you for watching. We at Lithizim appreciate your support. It is with great pleasure that we get to bring you these videos about geology, geophysics, GIS, and computer science. Until next time.